In this video, we explore six common pitfalls that newcomers often face with ggplot. From coding mistakes to visualization mishaps, we'll navigate through these challenges together. So let's dive in and refine your ggplot game. In my quarter file, I've already put in a little chart into a code chunk. And if you execute this, you will get a chart like this. Now, the mother of all mistakes is that people don't know how to put in colors into a plot. And this really depends on what you want to do. If you want to make all points have the same color or if you want to define the colors yourself, then you will have to put things outside of the AES call. But if you want to make sure that something is colored depending on the data, say on the species of our penguins that we have inside of our data set, then we'll have to put in stuff into the AES call. So say we want to make sure that all points are colored according to the species of the penguins, then we put in color and set it to species. And if we execute this, we get color into this and all the colors are chosen for us. We didn't do anything and this is a telltale sign that things need to go inside of the AES call because things are data dependent. But if you try to place it outside of the AES call, then you will realize that this gives you a mistake because, well, I forgot a comma here, that is bad. But still, it doesn't give you anything because it says object species not found. And the reason for that is because this column name is a column name and not a variable name. If we look into our environment, we don't have anything here. So this is why species is not found. So using a column name like the species only works inside of the AES column. This is another telltale sign. This is data dependent, put it inside of the AES. But what you can do outside of the AES call is make specific instructions like make all the points have color Doja Blue 4. Of course, you have to spell it correctly, but after that, you get points that have the correct color. Similarly, you could also use this to set the size to something specific like 4. Again, this was a specific instruction and we manually set how things look. ggplot didn't do anything for us, so this is why it is outside of the AES call now. And the really confusing thing is that if you put this inside of the AES call now, this won't even give you an error because this will actually work. But what you have done now is basically create a new column, a fake column inside of the data set that has only the entry Dodger Blue 4 inside of it. And that is why ggplot uses this new fake column to assign colors according to the values inside of that column. And of course, there is only one entry Dodger Blue 4 in that column. So this is why the legend contains only one entry and all the points have the same color. So watch out for this one. This is usually not what you want to do. If you want to use text with the color argument, then it will need to go outside of the AES call. Now, mistake number two is confusing the fill and color aesthetic. Let's check out how this works with a new code chunk. In there, let's put in a new ggplot call where we use as a data set, the diamonds data set. It looks like this, but it isn't that important. It has a lot of information about diamonds. What is important is that we use this to create a bar chart with this and we map the X aesthetic to the cut. So to this column here, and then we get a bar chart that looks like this. Now, what has happened to me a thousand times when I was starting ggplot was that I was thinking, hmm, this gray color is really ugly. Let's do something else instead. Let's use this Doja Blue 4 color. I really like this color for some reason. But in any case, I want to use it. And then I'm thinking, OK, I will just put the color and set this to Doja Blue 4. But once I do this, nothing is happening. But really, I'm not sure if you noticed something is actually happening, but it's hard to tell because what changed is the outline of these bars. That color became Dodger Blue 4. Maybe we can see this if we make this into something like yellow, something bright, then you can actually see this a little bit better. So this is what the color aesthetic does with things like rectangles or bar charts or whatever is basically an area. In all of these scenarios, color refers to the outline. And if you want to change the whole color, basically the fill color, then you also have to use the fill aesthetic. And then things look great, but of course this requires you to use a nice color. So let's put in Dodger Blue 4 again. And now things look nicer. And this reminds me, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button because this helps me. Thank you for that. And now let's get back to the video. Now, mistake number three is creating a legend manually with multiple geometric layers like GM point. We have seen like a minute ago or something like that, that if we put this part inside of the AES call, then we get a legend which will look like this. We could actually use this trick to create a legend with some entries that we want. And then we have a legend like this. But that's not particularly nice. And to make sure that you understand what I mean, let us actually look at a new example. Let's create a little fake data set. We'll just throw in this code here. 
and then we see that our fake data set has some x coordinates that's what this color is supposed to say and then we have two different columns column a and column b and i want to plot all of these points from all of the columns in a geometric layer and now it is really easy to just take this data set and think okay i will pass this to ggplot and then i will add a geom point layer and now if i make some room so that we can see everything now it's really easy to think that inside of the aes call you will just use the x column as the x coordinates you will use the call a column this one here for the y aesthetic and then you will specify with using the trick that we've just seen that this here refers to column a and you might even make the points larger to see them better and then you get the points including a legend and then you could take this layer copy it and then modify this to incorporate column b and that way you would have a legend that has column a and b inside of it and all of the points are inside of my plot now this is really easy to do and you might think that this is the way you are supposed to use ggplot but this is actually quite a lot of copy and paste to avoid to reuse geometric layers like this you see if you had 10 more columns a b c d e f g whatever if you had more columns like this then it would be really tedious to change all of the things by copy and pasting and more importantly this is really error prone so avoid that now if you're catching yourself trying to pull stunts like this then try to before you even pass the data to ggplot to rearrange the data what this means is that we are not using this data set here and pass it to ggplot instead we pass it to pivot longer and in pivot longer we say that we want to target columns call a and call b to rearrange them where the names of those columns go into a new column that we call column and the values of these two columns go into a new column that we call y and that way we get a data set that looks exactly like we specified and inside of this new column that we have named column you will see that there is call a call b inside of this now inside of one column and now what we can do is pass this data set to ggplot remove one of those layers and then we don't need to map the color aesthetic to some text instead we can just map it to the name of this column which was column again and in the y aesthetic we can just use our new column which we called y and now if we do that we can see that we have the exact same plot and we also have a legend here the only difference here really is that the labels are not like we specified them here now they are what the previous column names were so call a and call b and not the long version column a and column b but this part is easily fixed you can just use the data set that you have rearranged and then pass it to a mutate call where you modify this column using case when and then in there you reformat call a to column a and call b to column b and that way the entries inside of your data set will look nicer and if you pass this to ggplot this will look nicer too so really there is no reason why you should go the extra mile of putting in multiple layers with subsets of your data instead try to rearrange your data so that you can throw everything into one layer well sometimes there are reasons to use only subsets of your data in multiple layers but when you want to do stuff like this this is not one of those scenarios in that case just rearrange your data now the next mistake is creating a legend you may think what why wouldn't we do a legend that's crazy but what i'm trying to say is that in a lot of cases you actually don't need a bulky legend that takes a lot of room away from your data instead you can intelligently incorporate the information that is in the legends into other parts of your charts for example you could incorporate things like colors and shapes into the titles of your chart and that way you have more room for the actual data entries if you want to learn how to do something like this i have a video on youtube for that and there should be a notification popping up right about now and a different way to avoid a legend is to use direct labels which means to put labels right there where they're needed and we'll see an example of that in the next mistake so let's move on to the next mistake which is using too many colors let me demonstrate this with a new example so let's throw in a new code chunk in here and in that code chunk we can take a look at the gapminder data set from the gapminder package and we can see that this data set contains information about the life expectancy from different countries at different points in time and to make this data set a little bit smaller let us just filter it and select only a couple of countries and with that we have a smaller data set and we could take this data set now and pass it to ggplot and we'll make a line chart out of this so we add a gm line layer in there and then we map 
the aesthetics where we use the year as the x aesthetic, the life expectancy column as the y aesthetic, and for the color we use the country. And then we also might make the lines a little bit thicker, and that way we get a chart that looks like this. And even though these are only six countries, the line chart is already pretty messy. And this is despite the case that they all have kind of the same trend, but it becomes really hard to untangle all of those lines. And this is why such a messy line chart is often called spaghetti plot because lines go all over the place. And here really the crucial mistake was to just throw out too many colors. Instead, we should try to use less colors. And an easy way to do that is to first save this plot into a new variable. And then we know that we can always look at this chart again if we just call this variable. But we can also modify the chart by adding a new layer on top of this. And in this case, I want to use something from the GG highlight package, which has the GG highlight layer. And in there, I can just specify the condition just like in a filter call of the things that are supposed to be highlighted. And if I execute this now, we can see that everything that doesn't correspond to Germany or France get grayed out. And we have only color for these two countries. And also we have direct labels here now. We have removed the legend and instead put in labels right where they are useful so that we don't need a legend that takes up a lot of space to figure out which color corresponds to which country. So with GG Highlight, it's really easy to focus only on the main things that you want to focus on. And that way you get rid of a lot of color, which is great for the overall understandability of your chart. Another thing that you could always do, and this is something which I've done in my data visualization course, is throw all of the things that you don't want to look at anyway into a category that you call others. And then you can gray out this category too and only focus on the categories that you want to focus on. Finally, let us come to our new mistake, which is using the wrong colors. Let us take a look at our penguins chart from before the scatter plot here and put in colors according to the species of the penguins and now we can see that we have default colors for our species using the default colors isn't really a mistake technically but for me personally i feel like if i see the default colors i have the feeling that someone didn't really think about colors and didn't choose something nice so this is why I call this half a mistake. Using the defaults is just plain boring. One way to fix that could be to throw in a scale color manual layer and in there use the values argument to specify colors for each of those species. And that way you have different colors now. But this isn't the thing that I wanted to point out with this mistakes. I really wanted to focus on wrong colors. Here we actually have bright colors because all of the colors are really similar because we have different groups here. The species are not like related to each other. So this is why we don't want to imply any ordering with using colors like blue, light blue and dark blue. If you have different shades of blue, then it's easy to think that maybe these colors, maybe these groups are related to one another. In that case, it would be a mistake to use colors that are so similar. But if you have a numeric aesthetic, like instead of species using the body mass G column, then you can see we have basically one color that gets darker. In this case, it is a blue color that gets lighter or darker according to the values. Typically, we want to refer to higher values with darker colors and vice versa. And I don't know why ggplot does it the other way around. But in any case, I always make sure to use scale color gradient and set the low color to something really light like white and the high value to some primary color like blue. And that way I have a nicer ordering. So when you use colors, really think about how do you want to use colors? Do you want to use the colors to show different groups? Then use completely different colors like we have seen before. But if you want to use colors to imply some numeric value, then use a color gradient like we have done here and then try to make the higher values darker. I go into way more details on my data visualization course. If you're interested in that, you can check that out. But for a beginner's video like this, it's enough to just tell you to think about your colors. And I have given you a couple of pointers about what things you can think about. And with that, we have reached the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that like button. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.